Well, Casey here with CL Creative. We're teaching you web design and web flow one video at a time. And today I've got a awesome video for you. We're going to be looking at how to do a mouse hover effect where there's going to be some parallax that is taking place. I looked all over the web whenever I was looking to do this and I couldn't really find a great tutorial. And so here I am going to provide you with an awesome tutorial. I'm going to show you how to do this inside of Webflow, but we're going to use some custom code in order to do that. So let's jump into the computer and we'll get started. All right, well, here we are in the computer and this is the effect that we're going to be creating here. So as you move your mouse, if you hover over this, all of these different roles um, that I have here are just moving around. Let's jump into Webflow so we can look at how this is going to be set up. So this is a, a pretty simple setup, right? I've got a two column grid here in the hero section. And then essentially all I have here is a wrapper. So this is my wrapper that is wrapping the content on the left. This is the wrapper that is going to be wrapping the content over here on the right for us. So I just have that named hero animation wrapper. And then if you look down here, you notice that this is position relative. And so that's going to be important here in a moment as we think about how we should place these items. The next thing that I have is I have this main image, which is this girl here in the center, and she's at a Z index of two. Um, so that's where she's at. And then I have the circle that is actually behind her and the circle is at a Z index of zero and it's position absolute so that it would just stack on top of her and that's again why we need this wrapper hero animation wrapper to be position relative so that we can control all of these different elements now after that here's where i have these different items and so these are different roles this is a client of mine who is a marketing company or not a marketing company they are a staffing company for marketing companies um, and, and so these are some of the roles in which they're able to place people. And so we wanted to showcase that they could do that, but we wanted to provide some interactive elements. So this is what we have here. Now you could picture, you know, images, anything, right? Like on a site, it doesn't necessarily have to be these roles that are centered around this person, but this is how I have this set up. And so I have each of these as hero animation item, and I have each one of those as the, as the base class, right? This hero animation item. And then if you notice here, I have is one on that one. And if I click over here to this next one, I've got is two. And so this is, this is essentially how I am styling those or moving them around the canvas. Let, let me just go back to just the hero animation items for a second. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice whenever you try to place these is that uh, whenever you move the screen in and out, these are going to shrink but if you don't have a width set to them like in my case 50 percent is what worked really well so it allowed them to scale up and down so as this wrapper is scaling up and down these images inside of the wrapper because the percentage is tied to that is scaling up and down so if you find that maybe these images are moving and, and i can kind of show you what that might actually look like so if i just removed if I just remove this for a second, now you're gonna notice that whenever you start scrolling, you see how the images are moving. One way to get around that is simply by making sure that you have that 50% there or whatever it work, whatever works for you. So in my case, 50% worked great for me. So it will scale these up and down. So that's just a bit of the CSS. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about the JavaScript here in a moment. But essentially you're just gonna use position absolute to place these all around the person. Or could you imagine you have a bunch of images, you can place them wherever you want using position absolute. Okay, so that, that's kind of the HTML, that's the CSS. It's not super complex at all. The next thing that we need to look at is the JavaScript. Um, and just so you know, I do have an entire blog post that is going to provide you a step-by-step -step of all of the stuff that I'm talking about here. It's going to provide you with the structure. Um, it's going to walk you through all of the CSS that's set up. Now it's easier for me to share the CSS like this instead of taking a bunch of screenshots inside of Webflow, but essentially you can apply the same CSS to all of the different things. And then when you get down here, it's going to walk you through uh, all of the JavaScript logic that we're going to be talking about here in just a moment. Um, as well as there's going to be a section here where you can just copy and paste all of this as long as you name everything the same as I did. Now, I tried to create 
names for each of these elements, right? This is hero animation items. Um, and then you've got hero animation wrapper. So these are names that, you know, could be used anywhere in any project. And so let's just walk through some of this JavaScript here. So the first thing that we are actually doing is we need to, you know, create our variables. And so we're creating this wrapper variable and it's going to be hero animation wrapper. And the reason that we are going to query that and we want to know is because we're going to use mouse enter and mouse exit and mouse move. And we need to understand where that's going to be taking place on the wrapper. And then we're just going to have the different items. So really just two queries here. We're going to do a query selector all because there's multiple items. So we have hero animation items. So it's super important that, you know, your animation item, your each of these items that you're placing around, it has a base class of hero animation item. And then you're going to use a combo class in order to place those wherever you want. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add an event listener to this wrapper that we've queried here, and it's going to be mouse enter. And the reason that we're using this is because what it's actually going to allow us to do is determine, you know, when the mouse has entered inside of the wrapper. And when that takes place, we're going to use this built in function here, get bounding client rec. And what this is going to allow us to do is figure out what is the center of this wrapper. And so we've got some math here that's calculating that for us. And we're going to be able to find the center of the wrapper. And then we're going to store these coordinates. So we're going to store these coordinates right here. And then the next thing that we're going to do, so this is when the mouse enters in, it's going to find this for us. It's going to store these coordinates and some data attributes so that it doesn't have to keep doing, finding it over and over again. They're going to be stored there in these data attributes for us. And then what's going to take place here is that whenever the mouse moves inside of this wrapper, we're going to get that mouse move event. We're going to, we're going to look at those attributes that we stored, right? The center attributes, the center X and the center Y. And we're going to do some calculations here. And these calculations are going to help us to understand what the offset is. And whenever you do these calculations, this offset of offset from the center, you, you can you can adjust this divisor so it can be 20, it could be 10, it could be 60, it can be 100. Essentially, whenever you you do this, it, this is going to determine how much these items actually move. So if we had a lower divisor, right, they're going to move a lot more. If we have a higher divisor, then they're going to move a lot less. Now, I liked 40, right? They're, they're not moving around a ton, but um, this is where I kind of landed after a little bit of testing. And so that's why I have 40 here. But we can, we can make that divisor higher, and then the intensity would get a lot less, and they wouldn't move very much at all. And then the next thing that we're going to do here is we are going to you know, look at each of these particular items. So we're calling them parallax items here. And what what what's taking place here is we're looking at the intensity of the movement. And so each of these are going to move a little bit less. I don't know if you can really tell as you move this, like, like this one right here doesn't move very much. This one doesn't move a lot. This one over here moves the most. Uh, and so that's because I have these named is one, two, three, four, five, six. And what this is actually doing is, is it's looking inside of this index and it's saying, okay, what is their order in the DOM? So if we look out here, it's looking at the order of these items here in the DOM. And, and when it gets, when it queries it, it's creating this node list for us. And so what is taking place is this is actually providing a little bit more movement for those that are, um, you know, come lower in the document object, right? So um, if, if their index is like one, then it's one plus one or zero, which would be the first one, zero plus one times two is just two, but you can imagine we have six here. So it's six plus one, which, or which will be five plus one, which will make six times two, which is 12. And so what this is actually doing is it's just providing us with 
how much we're going to transform this one. So we're taking the offset X, which is what we are, what we're getting here. And then we're taking this intensity and we're multiplying those together and that's giving us a pixel value. And we're doing the same thing for offset Y. And what that is doing is determining how far each of these are actually going to be moving. So doing it that way, what it allows us to do is to easily set up this parallax effect where there's some movement that takes place and some are moving more than others uh, and some are moving less than others so that they're not all moving exactly the same and that they're not all, you know, sticking exactly to the mouse. There's a little bit of movement, you know, that is taking place there. And then the next thing that we're doing, if we just jump back over here to the code, whenever the mouse leaves, we're just setting these items, each one of them back, we're translating them back to zero and zero so that they fall right back into place. So not too difficult, just a few lines of code. Uh, some of the things that you wanna keep in mind is if you just wanted to copy this and apply this to your particular project, you know, you wanna have the wrapper hero animation wrapper named exactly the same and then you want to have each of these items that you are going to be animating you want to have them with hero animation items or you know you can make whatever name you want i tried to make it as easy as possible for you to be able to to transfer this to other projects um, now if i jump over to the blog post that i wrote there's some things that i want to show you down here at the bottom so if you go all the way down to the bottom of this blog post, we jump way down here to three ways to control intensity. What you're going to see is this is the first method that I just talked to you about where uh, we're using the order in the DOM in order to calculate those with their index and everything like that. But say that doesn't work for you. You can. There are, there are a couple of other options that you could use. You could use... Um, a couple of different classes right so intensity low intensity medium intensity high and then you can just determine what those intensities are right here uh, or if you wanted to get really granular you could use some attributes and then on each of the images you could add whatever attribute you want so data intensity is 1.5 3 and 5 and so let me just show you where you would add that so if you wanted to do the attribute model you would just click on one of these go to settings and then you're going to add in your attribute right here so we would just take data intensity we would add that like that and now we can determine whatever that intensity is for this particular one right so maybe we want it to be 1.5 or maybe we want it to be 10 uh, not 119 but maybe 10 so you could do that and now this one would move a whole lot whenever you went through and, and moved your mouse but if you needed to find control over it that there is an option in order to do that now what that would require for you to do is to change some of the code in order for that to take place so you see here in this parallax items section of the code we would essentially copy this part right here uh, we would copy that and then we would come to our project and we would need to update that right here inside of this so we would paste this in right here and we would remove that code and now it would work with the attributes and the same thing with the um, class based portion right you would remove this code right here you would put in the class based portion of the code and then you would just go through and set um, each of the each of the uh, combo classes on these right here. So low, medium, and high on these. But for something like this, I think using just their index inside of uh, of the DOM, their order there in order to determine like how much they're going to move makes it really easy. Makes it really fast and you can just apply that. So this is how you do a mouse hover effect, uh, making this parallax go on here inside of your Webflow project. Again, you could use this wherever you want. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be in the hero. It doesn't have to be wrapped around someone, right? 
the way that I got these obviously to move behind or in front is just by adjusting the Z index. So she's at a two. This one right here, the head of customer success is at a one. These right here are all at threes. And this one right here is at a one again. So you can do all kind of different things with this. But hopefully that was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of it, you know, like it, subscribe and put out other videos just like this. And, uh, you know, if you want me to answer some other videos for you, put it down in the comments for me. Let me know what video you want to me to make for you next. Now let's try to do that.